And welcome back to Walking Through the Word. Today we're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 28. So if you have your Bibles, open them up with me as we walk through the Word together. We are finally now concluding our study through the book of 1 Thessalonians. And it's been an incredible journey seeing the words of Paul, hearing the words of Paul, examining the words that the Spirit inspired Paul to write. And as Paul concludes his words, um, take it with uh, much anticipation that obviously these are not his last words because we have another book, 2 Thessalonians, that will be uh, we will be examining together. We'll be walking through the word together. So please uh, prayerfully consider walking through that as well in the near future. Paul says now, we ask you brothers to respect those who labor now that's really Im important that we consider this paul as a minister of the gospel understands just how important and just how weighty it can be um, to work and toil for the kingdom of god he understands that those within the leadership of the church in thessalonica um, are responsible for a lot of um, heaviness, weightiness, spiritual heaviness. And so Paul tells the brothers at the church, he says, brothers, respect those who labor. And indeed, we are to respect those who labor amongst us, the pastors, the elders, uh, the servants at our church who toil for the kingdom, who um, spend time in counseling and in prayer, who go through the word uh, teaching you. Um, week in and week out who invite you to their homes to fellowship with you and pray for you and and encourage you and build you up respect them because they're doing the work of the lord they're not just sitting back and raking in the money they're actually toiling for the kingdom so respect those who labor among you that's at your own church in your own congregation and especially those who are over you that's very important. So your pastors, your leaders, those who um, take responsibility for your souls, to care for your souls, respect them. Give honor. Show them honor. If it is in your heart to show kindness to them, um, to provide a meal for them, or to tithe uh, in order that you might support them, then do that. It's a beautiful gift from the congregation to pastors and elders when their churches take seriously and respect and are thankful for the kind of work that their pastor genuinely pours out day in and day out for them he says and are over you in the lord and admonish you that's now we have to consider this what does the word admonish mean well, it doesn't just mean to correct, but it actually means to warn or those, it means to reprimand someone firmly. So when you admonish your children, it is a firm but loving way of rebuking someone. So there's a way of rebuking that can be harsh, that can be ungentle, that can be unkind, but there is a way of rebuking someone who teaches someone who lovingly guides someone and yet is firm in that that's what admonish means so actually respect those who are over you in the lord and those who rebuke you who teach you who firmly instruct you in the ways of the lord respect them for their work in the gospel and he says 13 and is to esteem them very highly now of course Respect is given where respect is earned. If you have a pastor or leaders that you believe are living in sin or are not walking in accordance to the call of their ministry, then it is also your responsibility to ensure that you call them out peaceful, peacefully, lovingly, gently. You, as the church, as the brothers and sisters in the Lord, should have the confidence to go to your pastor and say we don't think that you are operating in the way that you that you're meant to do so 
But if they are, esteem them. Esteem them, respect them, show them honor in the congregation. And esteem them very highly, as Paul would say. But not for their own pride, but in love, okay? So there's nothing more precious to a pastor than to be loved back by their congregation. The reason I pour out my heart to my brothers and my sisters is because the greatest gift that I can receive from them is their love back for me and their love back for my wife and for my family. That really is the thing I treasure the most is the love of the brothers and sisters of the church. So esteem your pastors, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Recognize what they do for the kingdom. Don't just sit back and say, well, I guess he has to do that because we're paying him. No, no, no. They do so because they're called to do it. And if you provide for them, praise God. And admonish and esteem those who work for a living, who do not take from the church so that they would so that they wouldn't be a hindrance to the gospel. That is huge. A bivocational pastor, a pastor who not only works full time, but is continually doing work for the ministry. Man, esteem that brother. Esteem that brother highly among you. And be at peace among yourself. Again, this is Paul speaking to the church in his final words. Just his concluding thoughts like, love those who labor among you. Love your pastors. And love one another. Be at peace with one another. We're going to continue on now. Verse 14 through 15. It goes on. And we urge you, brothers, again, admonish. What does it mean? To firmly um, rebuke someone. To firmly teach someone. Reprimand someone. Admonish the idol. Now, that's really important. Who are the idol? Not like the idolaters, <laughs> people who worship idols, but the idol are the, the lazy people, the people that don't uh, toil for the kingdom, the people that don't work for the kingdom, the people that are kind of just sitting back are not working for the gospel. In fact, these are the people that aren't working at all. They're not trying to look for work. Um, they're just kind of lackadaisical in their in their approach to life they're not really striving for anything they're just kind of coasting on the little that they do have no admonish them rebuke them in a gentle and loving way tell them like hey let's get to work let's let's get in charge of of your your life let's get in charge of the gospel let's get in charge of the things that god has has commanded you to take charge of these are really important words don't allow laziness among, among you brothers and this is to the brothers and sisters of the church paul's telling them like hey you christians make sure that you're calling out people within the church that are being lazy <laughs> but do so of course in a loving but firm way and he says again encourage encourage the faint-hearted again brothers and sisters not just the pastor the pastor's not the only one who's responsible for ensuring that there is spiritual wellness in the church. You, you admonish the idol. You encourage the faint-hearted. Get to work for the for the ministry. Help the weak, as Paul says here. Help, help the weak. Who are the weak? Those who are sick. Those who have no physical strength. Maybe there's a disability among the people. Maybe there's a mental disability, the a special needs person, um, whatever it is, help the weak and be patient with them. That's all of these people, all. So who's the them here that's being mentioned? The idle, the faint-hearted, <laughs> and the weak. Because it does take a lot of patience to lovingly care for people who are lazy. It takes a lot of patience to lovingly care someone who is always discouraged, who's always broken hearted, who always who's always faint hearted. And the word is so interesting, faint hearted. You think of somebody who's fainting, someone who's always passing out. <laughs> well, there's people in the church whose hearts are constantly being put out by trial and difficulty. 
And these can be weak people. These can be idle people. But it is the responsibility of the church to come alongside of them and lovingly care for them. Um, not only the pastors, not only the leaders of the church, but you, brothers and sisters, you are called also to care for them. Verse 15, see that no one, see that no one repays evil for evil, right? If somebody does evil to you, your responsibility is to pay them with good, as he says, but always seek to do good to another and to everyone that is our responsibility as a christian if somebody does evil to us vengeance is not the way revenge is not the way we are to lovingly care for our brothers and sisters who do evil to us and to forgive them and to care for their souls verse 16 rejoice always and pray without ceasing how do you do this you, you might think to yourself, as an individual, there's no way that I can just pray 24-7. Now, again, this letter is to the church. So if everyone is engaging in prayer throughout the day, lifting up prayers throughout the day, that is a way of praying without ceasing. But this is done in faith. It's not about setting rules and regulations and standards in your life. It's about approaching the throne of glory in faith and lifting up people throughout the day lifting up your wife your children your family uh, your pastors your your brothers and sisters at the church pray constantly pray communicate with god that's really what praying is it's just communicating with your father verse 18 give thanks in all circumstances right in every situation that you find yourself whether that's difficulty or pain or or sickness or prosperity or whatever it is whatever it is that you find yourself in give thanks in all those circumstances why for this what's this not only the circumstances that are being brought against you but also the giving of thanks is also the will of god this is the will of god in christ jesus for you the circumstances that you find yourself and the the thanksgiving that you give in the midst of the circumstances, that is the will of God for you. So if you find yourself in the middle of a trial and tribulation and you find yourself giving thanks, know that that is the will of God. Not only the trial or the difficulty, but also the giving of thanks in the midst of that. A true Christian knows how to find the things they can give thanks for even in the difficult times verse 19 do not quench the spirit how do you quench the spirit how can a fire be quenched well just like a fire if you pour water into it or sand over it you can bring the fire down in its hotness in its ability to produce heat in the same way when we as christians when we give in to the lust of our flesh when we are unrepentant and we're not seeking the lord and we're just kind of coasting on our faith we're quenching the fire of the spirit within us we're quenching the power of the spirit within us we're reducing the spirit because the spirit wants to be poured out from us the, the spirit wants to move and breathe through us but if we are if we give in to our sin and we don't pursue the things of the kingdom and we don't pursue christ and we're just kind of we're just lazy in our pursuits and we're not reading our bible and we're not praying we're quenching the spirit and that can be a dangerous place for us as Christians if we are not careful. He goes on to say, do not despise prophecies, right? There are many Christians who despise prophecy. Now, of course, prophecy here does not mean somebody who can just tell the future or have special insight or supernatural insight into the future or about people's personal lives. That's not what prophecy is. Prophecy is the speaking forth of truth. 
It's forth telling, not foretelling, but forth telling. That's speaking forth the truth of God, speaking forth the word of God in such a way that it pierces your heart, it pierces your soul. As you hear preachers, as you hear your brothers and sisters giving the word of God to the congregation, don't despise that. Don't despise when a brother or sister comes to you and says, I believe the Lord wants me to pray for you. And they pray over you and, and they start to speak the word over you. Don't despise that. But in verse 21, but test everything. So if somebody steps up and says, I I am a prophet. I have a prophetic word to give. And they start to speak. Don't just accept those words because they claim to be a prophet or just because they claim to have a word from God. Test those words. Test everything that goes on around you. Don't just accept things haphazardly. Test it. He says, hold fast what is good. So if somebody comes and and they have a word for you and it's evil or it's bad, test that and let it go. Rebuke them, admonish them, say, you know what? That's not from the Lord. That's actually from the devil. You're trying to bring me down. You're trying to destroy the faith that I have in the Lord. No, brothers and sisters, don't let the enemy take that from you. Verse 22, abstain from every form of evil. This is really important. Abstain. What does that mean? Do not participate. Do not enjoy. Do not come around. Don't even get close to it. Abstain from it. Every form of evil. If you're in sin right now, repent. Repent. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not quench the Spirit. Come to the Lord. Do not let the enemy tear you down. Continue now in verse 23 through 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you, make you holy in his sight completely. And yes, indeed, it is the role of the church to pursue Christ in such a way that they are increasing in holiness, increasing in in sanctification we are to pursue christ in that manner and god himself the peace of god will sanctify us he says and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless that's the same thing as sanctification right holiness in the spirit holiness in the lord May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, brothers and sisters, we are anticipating the return of our King. And God, the God of peace, will sanctify us. He will make us holy. He will keep our spirit, our soul, and our body. He will keep us blameless so that when we see the king of glory return man we will be holy just as he is holy we will be glorified just as he is glorified look at verse 24 and he god who calls you and you indeed are called brothers and sisters by the lord jesus christ you have been called by god he who calls you is faithful god is faithful we are not faithful we cannot keep ourselves. We cannot sanctify ourselves. We cannot uh, keep our spirits and our souls and our bodies blameless. Only God can do that. Only God is able. Because he who calls you is faithful. And he will surely do it. God will surely do it. Do not have confidence in your flesh. Have confidence in the Lord and in God's ability. Verse 25 through 28 to finish up. Brothers, pray for us. Yes, please. Pray for us. Pray for your leadership. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for me. I need prayer just as much as all of you. Pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. And we know, I know right now, 
we are in the midst of COVID-19. <laughs> so to even give holy hugs or holy high fives or holy kisses is not ho not heard of. But in, in a sense, love each other tenderly. Send out holy text messages, right? Greet one another with holy elbows if you have to at this point. Love each other. Desire to see each other. Verse 27, I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. I love this. Paul wrote this letter so that every Christian would be built up, would be admonished, would be corrected, would be encouraged so that they would see not only the love that Paul has for them, but that the, the love that God has for them. And we Christians 2000 years later can still read the words of Paul and be built up and admonished. And that's why I love going through the word chapter by chapter, book by book, verse by verse, precept upon precept, because we can understand the fullness of the word of God and just how precious it is. Verse 28, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Indeed, brothers and sisters, may the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May you embrace him as he pours out his love into your hearts. Do not, do not forsake him. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not run to evil, but run to the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent. Believe in the Lord Jesus for the salvation of your soul, for the forgiveness of your sins. Receive everlasting life so that you too could be made blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus with us and with all the saints all throughout the world. For this all, we pray for all of this. In Jesus' name, we ask you, God, do that work in us for you surely are faithful. Bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope you have enjoyed this journey through First Thessalonians. God bless you. Until next time on Walking Through the Word.